Well, for this week's project, I wanted to make a thoroughly used toolbox. Stay tuned and see how easy and fun this project is. All right, before I say anything else, I'm going to apologize in advance if I sound really congested. We have an extremely high pollen count today, but I need to get this recorded. So I've taken allergy pills. Hopefully later in the video, I will start to clear up. So we'll talk about what, how we're building this. And as we build the toolbox, I'll tell you why we're doing this. But this is patterned after my dad's toolbox that he used to have when I was a kid. So for this, I need a couple of pieces of wood. Now, this is one of those tumbling tower blocks uh, game pieces from Dollar Tree. I love these. They're really good for crafting. They're really easy to use and they're really convenient. And this is my last one of the 50 I got. Actually, I got 100 because I got two packages when I bought those. So I need to get back to Dollar Tree one of these days. So I cut one, one of those down to one and a half inches long. All the measurements will be in the blog post. So if you miss them, that's okay. And what I wanted was an eighth inch thick piece of wood for the lid, but I didn't have one. So I cut down a scrap of one of these ginormous craft sticks from Walmart. And I cut it the same size as this block. So our first step is going to be to glue these together. So we're gonna make a, a lid this way. Now this is going to be a non-opening toolbox. It's just meant to sit in the corner. Now I use tacky glue, and this is just some gel super glue. The gel super glue will help it to hold together immediately while the tacky glue dries. And then I am going to use a couple of clamps because I want this to be clamped on all four sides because I have found that these do have a habit of uh, warping if you're not, if you don't really give them the support. So this is going to be a non-opening toolbox. It's just going to be something to sit in the corner to remind us of our dads or our grandpas. Um, so as we work on this later, I'll t like I said, I'll tell you why we're making it and the story, there'll be more details in the blog post as always. So I'm going to give this glue probably an hour or two to set up and dry and when that is accomplished I'll come back and we'll start working on our toolbox. All right the glue is dried on our lid piece so I'm going to take a little bit of sandpaper here. Um, this happens to be 220. I wish I had some coarser grit sandpaper but I don't so this will have to do it today. I just want to get most of the roughness off of this piece of wood where I cut it. Um, now, what I've done here, I have some black paper. Now this is some black paper I picked up. I think I got it at Walmart. It was labeled as cardstock, but it's really not cardstock. It's not much thicker than printer paper. So it didn't work for what I bought it for, but it works for doing things like we're going to do today. I cut a couple, I cut a strip that was two inches wide and then I cut off, I don't know, probably about three inch pieces. So what I'm going to do, and I actually want to have my cutting, my little cutting mat here because I don't want to cut, I don't want to ruin my knife. I'm going to cut some angle cuts here. That will help me to not have this quite so bulky. to start by gluing that piece up like that. And we're, we're going to do this in stages. I don't want to put glue where it's going to show. We're going to glue on the area that's going to glue together and then so this glue won't show at all. So I'm going to let this set up for oh, five or ten minutes and I'll come back and we'll do the next piece. I'll do the same thing with this one. I'll start it here. 
and the size you cut your paper isn't super critical for this. Um, I just want to cover up the fact that I'm using wood and that it's this piece is two layers. So by putting a nice paper covering on that, it's going to make it so that it's not as noticeable. All right, so that glue needs to dry. When it's dry, I'll come back, we'll trim the corners, and we will get the, this finished gluing. All right, that glue's had a few minutes to set up, and I went ahead and finished the lid portion so I can do this part on camera. I'm going to trim, we're going to do a little trimming. Trim this even with the ends. And I'd rather trim back than have my paper cut too short to begin with. So This way I know the corners are more apt to get covered. I'm cutting this off fairly straight with the end of the toolbox. Oops, now I'm going to put some glue here and you might need to weigh this down with something just to make sure that it's going to stay put. And if your paper isn't trimmed perfectly that's fine. We'll have plenty of opportunities to um, trim it later. Now make sure this paper is pulled up really tight. It's alright if it overlaps on the where the two pieces come together. It's fine if they overlap. Um, that's perfectly fine but we want to make sure this is nice and tight so that when we do our aging it doesn't tear the paper. So see I can do a little bit of trimming here now. Now, I'm going to let this glue completely dry before we go on to our next step. All right, my glue is dry, so I dug out some Anita's acrylic paint in True Red, and I've got some here on a little cup that I'm using as a palette. That way I have less of a mess on my tray. And actually, I am going to, because I know I'm going to be messy, try to avoid some of the mess. Sorry about that, I didn't mean to move you guys. I've got this craft stick that I like to stick things onto to paint them. So take that the side that you did the gluing on and stick that down to this because we are not going to paint that side. Those two surfaces will be glued together later, but I want to be able to age this. And we might need two coats. Now you might be saying, well, why did we use a black paper underneath? That's because I want to paint, I want to sand down to the dark color on the corners in different places. So this toolbox. So first, why am I paint, why am I making dad's toolbox today? Well, my cousin, I'm friends with my one of my cousins on Facebook, and he from time to time posts a photo that was taken by his father of my father carrying him piggyback and he posted it again the other day and so I've been thinking about my dad who's been gone for mm, 20 years I think and this toolbox was his toolbox or the one I'm being inspired by was a toolbox that he kept in his car for as long as I could remember and he would dig that thing out every once in a while when he somebody needed help whether it was us or somebody else my dad was one of those guys that could make anything work he could keep anything running. It didn't matter what it was, if it was a car, if it was an appliance, if it was a door or a window, he could fix it. So I decided since Father's Day is coming up next month, we're going to make my dad's toolbox so that it can kind of sit in a corner someplace and be a little bit of him in everybody's dollhouse. So um, that's why we're doing this today. Now I will probably off camera do a second coat of red because I want this to be a good thick coat of red paint 
and then once I've got a nice solid red, I'll come back and we'll do our first round of aging. So let's get this painted. All right, my paint is fairly well dried now. Uh, it's not a perfect coat of paint. Um, I do think that this color I chose is possibly a semi-transparent as opposed to an opaque color. Uh, it doesn't say anywhere on the bottles. That is one downside to the craft paints is they don't tell you that stuff and it would be nice if they would. But I've got a fairly good coat. It doesn't have to be perfect because this is an old toolbox. It's going to get aged a lot. And one of the things I love, and I was hoping it would do it, is it warped my paper just a little bit on some of the surfaces. So it looks like it's dinged up and bent up, and that's exactly what I wanted. Now I have my sandpaper back, and this is the same 220 I used earlier. Now I'm going to hit this. I want to get this edge where the bottom of the lid basically would be, and I also want the top corner. some select sanding here and I'm hoping to sand back to the black there we go I'm getting a nice black line there now I won't make you watch every bit of this process because this is going to take me a while I'm going to think about where would the toolbox be the most bent up? Where would it have gotten the most wear? Obviously our corners. That top edge, and I'm going to do both, both of the long edges. Uh, in fact, I'm going to do all four of the edges on that top part that's going to come together. That way, no matter where, which direction we decide is the front later, it will be fine. So I'm going to Turn the camera off and I'm just going to continue to sand and break through that red paint so that I see black. And when that's done, I'll come back and we'll put a wash of color on. All right, I've knocked back that red quite a bit on the edges. So now we're going to do our first layer of grunge. For that, I've got some woodsy smoke craft paint in here with just the teeniest bit of water. Got a little more water over here too, because I'm going to see if this is thin enough. Oh, a little more water. And I've got a cotton swab. I'm not going to apply this, this layer anyway. I don't want to apply with a um, paintbrush. I want to do cotton swab. Let's try it on the bottom first in case there's way too much. And just kind of touch it and wipe it with clean end. And after we glue this together, we are going to do more aging. There's going to be aging done on this on several levels because I want this to, to look like I remember my dad's toolbox, like I said earlier. And it was not, it was no long ways from a new toolbox. Um, he'd had that thing for years and years and uh, that's what I want to replicate here. And the water is kind of reactivating my red a little bit too. All right, that's done. Now I think I'm going to go ahead and glue this together. Put a little bit of glue there. And try to line this up as best you can. There. Now I'm going to let that glue dry. And when that is completely dried, I'll come back and we'll go on to our next step. All right, our glue is dry. And this is looking just the way I wanted it to. So now it's time to work on trying to create a handle for the top of the box and a latch for the front. For that, I've got more of that same really lightweight black paper. And I'm going to start by taking, this is a one inch wide strip of paper, and I want to make it start to form. I, what I want to do is make a, um, 
a tube. And it doesn't want to be very big. I kind of thought about I kind of been kind of puzzling over how I want to do this handle. Now I think this is going to be our best bet. So make sure this is going to fit in Mr. Doll's hand. Yes, it is. Okay. Kind of cut into that, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. And once again, I'm using the black because that way it will already look aged by the time we get, we're going to paint it, but we're going to paint it not really thoroughly so that it kind of looks like it's tarnished and dirty. And we're going to put more, more layers of aging on this later. All right, so that is that. And then I just have just a flat piece of the same paper and I've got some dazzling metallics and shining silver. I'm hoping this is going to be a, not a thorough, thorough coat of color. And let's see if I have a toothpick. Let's see, can I? that on there just so that I've got a way to hold that. I don't want to try to juggle that. This way it will be. <laughs> okay, that was a total fail. Let's paint towards the toothpick, not away. And we can always put a wash of black paint over this if we decide it's too silver. Now I'm going to put that into my little holder and that way it dries and doesn't have to lay against anything. And then I'm going to just paint a chunk of this paper in the silver and then we'll use, we'll cut pieces and form what will look like a latch out of this piece. And that's there, perfect. It's not an even coat. So I'm going to let these two batches of paint and the glue dry. And when that's dry, we'll come back and we'll start assembling a latch and a handle. All right, the paint on both of these has dried, so now we can work with them. So I'm gonna kind of flatten this first with my fingers. And then I've got a pair of pliers, just regular pliers from, the tool, from my toolbox. I'm gonna to try and get this centered as best I can. And what this is going to allow me to do is fold these ends down so that I can eyeball the shape of a handle. I didn't get that exactly in the middle, but that's okay because we can trim this end. There. Now we have a handle shape. So I am going to measure, okay, how long is this? It's going to reinforce those bends so that it stays the way we want it. And if your handle's a little off on this, it's okay because I know the handle on my dad's toolbox was really bent because well, let's just say it, it saw a lot of abuse over its years. So when this is the way I want it, it is three-fourths of an inch long. So we're going to make a few marks on the top of our toy toolbox. Let me get my smaller ruler. There, that'll be easy. So that was three-fourths of an inch. So that means about three-eighths of an inch out from the center. I want to make a mark. So the center of my toolbox will be right here. It fits just fine. So I'm going to put some tacky glue out on my table. And I'm going to get a toothpick. And I'm going to put 
tacky glue. And I'm also going to use some of my super glue gel just as kind of a added um, bit of holding power here. Yeah, let's see if I can pick this up in such a way that I don't super glue my fingers to anything. All right. This right here. Get right where I want you. And I'm going to hold on to that for just a couple of seconds. All right, I am going to hold this in place until it wants to stay. Once this is set up enough that I know it won't fall off, we will come back and we'll make our latch out of our piece of paper. So I'll be back when this dries. All right, now we are going to make something to represent the latch on the toolbox. It's not going to be exact. It's just going to be something to give the impression that, yeah, there's a way to, to latch this toolbox shut. Start with just a little tiny rectangle, and I think I'm going to cut it down just a little more than that. And I'm just eyeballing this. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that'll work. So I am going to get a little more glue out. And I am making this latch up as I go. I'm just kind of trying to think of what it would look like. And um, we are going to be aging this, so. I'm gonna make a mark. I'm gonna put some glue right here in the middle. Just something a little smaller in the middle of this, just to give it a little dimension. There, now we're gonna let that dry. And once that's dry, we're going to, I think our next step will be to put on a coat of clear matte Mod Podge, and then we'll do some more aging after we seal this paint. So I'll be back when the glue dries. All right, my glue is dry, so I am going to first put this lightly onto my craft stick. Um, so that I can hold on to it. And now I've got a handle. And I already did the bottom. It's already been Mod Podge and it's dry. So I've got some matte Mod Podge here and a brush. And okay, that's not gonna work. I don't wanna stick it on any harder. I guess I will just hold it. And the reason I am Mod Podging at this point is I wanna seal this surface so that I won't mess it up. I love how this looks so far. It looks exactly the way I want it to at this point. But I want to add some, some grime, some grunge, some just, this toolbox has been um, around. And in order to do that, I want to add another, some more stuff, but I don't want to mess up what I already have. So if I seal this, I'm going to set it on the skewer so it doesn't stick to the table. If I seal this now, this, that will protect this surface. And then anything I put on over this, I can wipe back a little bit more easily so that I can get it to just the point I want it. So I am going to let this dry. And when it's dry, I'll come back and we can start adding our next layer of dirt and grime. 
All right, I brought the camera in a little closer so you can see more of what I'm doing on this step. So our Mod Podge is dry, and this already looks great. But I want to go a little further. I don't know what that is. Something on my tray. So I drug out my oil paints. Now these are just cheap oil paints. You normally see me pull these out when we're doing certain food things. We're making certain miniature foods. I've only pulled out two colors. I've got the yellow ochre and I've got the lamp black. And we don't need much. I've got a couple of cotton swabs. I'm going to take a cotton swab and I'm going to get just a little bit of yellow ochre on it. And I'm going to put the lid back on before I make a mess. And now I'm going to pick places that I think would probably be extra dirty. I think the, the handle and I think on this latch and maybe a couple of spots there. Now I'm going to take a piece of a paper towel. And this is going to make a more greasy, grimy looking dirt than we got earlier when we used our paints. Now I've got the lamp black. Again, just a tiny, tiny bit on the end of a cotton swab. Put it back on before I get oil paint all over my tile. Now you see just a tiny, tiny bit. This is going to have a different quality to it than some of our other black that we put on earlier. So we just got a few spots. I got a little carried away on that batch, so that's okay. Another piece of paper towel. go even further if we wanted to. We could add some rust, we could do all kinds of things to this, but I think after this, this is going to look sufficiently handled. <laughs> Let's get a little more black. I didn't get that knocked down quite to the degree I would have liked. I already I played around with this on the back and the bottom of the box off camera to get exactly the look I was going for. But this is why we did our Mod Podge on the last step because this slides now. If I hadn't done the Mod Podge, there's a chance this would have just soaked into the paper and it wouldn't wipe back at all. But by burnishing this with the paper towel, I'm leaving what looks like a greasy black stain as opposed to the black that was on there earlier from the paint, from the paper and the brown that we had on earlier. There we go. So now that should set up, it should dry for a little bit before we handle it too much, but we have a thoroughly aged toolbox to set in our dollhouse on the corner of the porch. If you have a garage or a workshop, this would be a great addition. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, hit the like button. Oh, and be sure and go over to the blog post. There'll be more about the toolbox and some photographs, and I'll list everything over there that I used as far as paint colors and everything. There'll be photos, and you'll be able to see what it looks like. Um, if you enjoy my content and haven't subscribed, I encourage you hit that subscription button and the notification bell so you know when I do another video. Thank you very much for watching and I will talk to you next time. Bye.